Affairs, and there was some amount of um, tension or fight between the Foreign Affairs Minister and the MP for Ningo Prapa this afternoon. What exactly happened? And the ranking member of foreign, uh, the Foreign Affairs Committee, Samuel Kujito Ablaka, raised the fact that they had, the minority had done some of this, it has, had done its investigations and had come up with figures pointing to the fact that um, a property which was just sold last year for $3.5 million, the country or ministry is making plans to go and buy it for $12.2 million. That's, quote, to use his words, an inflation of close to $8 million. Mm. And because of that, he had figures and he had documents to present to the speaker to that effect. So the speaker took those documents and he said it could not be ad 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 admissible in, it was not as admissible in the house as evidence because it was just an internet production. That's mm -hmm. to use the words of the speaker. So he, he overruled and quashed that. Then the house was suspended because there was some heat. So after the house was suspended, the Honorable Shelly Ayokubuchu confronted the Honorable Ablakwa outside the chamber of the house that this is a matter which came up during the committee. If you need a clarification, you could have come to me for, us to, for me to clarify mm -hmm. rather than for you to put it up on the floor of the house when this matter has actually been dealt with at my level. Okay. So it was during that confrontation that the Honorable Ayokubuchu noticed that the Honorable Sam George was taking video footage. Mm. So then he, she moved towards him. But he, he, she was waxed, waxed that way by the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee and her own bodyguard. Private citizen Boachi Zemoni Taria has filed a writ at an Accra High Court against a non-executive commissioner of the Electoral Commission, Hajia Saida Tumaida, and the commission itself. The plaintiff has accused her of working at the commission even after she passed the mandatory age of retirement, 60 years on the 5th of June this year. And the plaintiff is praying the court to order her to proceed on a compulsory retirement and pay back all salaries she recovered from the electoral commission from June till date. Now my colleague Duke Mensah Poku has been following this particular story and has joined me in the studio. Duke, welcome to CNR. Thank you. What more can you tell us about this particular um, lawsuit? Well, uh, this gentleman who says he's a private citizen stays in Paraguay states in Accra is bringing this action against this non-executive commissioner of the Electoral Commission because according to records available to him and his lawyers, um, the woman is no more eligible to work in the Electoral Commission because she has passed her compulsory age of 60 years based on her SNET records, which states that her date of birth is 5th June 1958. So the calculations means that she should have gone on retirement uh, on the 5th of June 2018. That's when she would have turned 60. The construction of a fence wall has teachers of the Achimota Preparation School at loggerheads with authorities of the Achimota School. Now, the two schools are next door neighbors, and normally they've been enjoying cordial relationship, but as we understand, they are at loggerheads now. Here's more in this report. The Achimota School has, over the years, been battling with issues of land encroachment, a situation that has been a matter of concern to the alumni, students, and management of the school. To address this issue, the management of the school is reported to have proposed the fencing of all lands belonging to the Achimota School. The land upon which the Achimota Preparatory School is situated is part of the earmarked lands to be fenced. Even though the land is a property of the Achimota School, the staff of the Achimota Preparatory School were worried over the decision of the school not to build the wall in accordance with the agreements met between the two parties. According to them, the wall is being built higher than the level they advocated for. Residents of Tetegu are calling government to, at a as a matter of agency, construct a school in the area as they constantly fear the worst as children within the community across ma cross a major highway on a daily basis to attend school. The only public school available to residents of Tetegu, many of whom are not so financially buoyant, is one at Oblogo, a neighboring community. In order to get to school, pupils of all ages have to cross the Malam Kaswa Highway, a busy road notorious for frequent motor accidents. No, I'm government is going to cross the road. But I am not as dented as you see, or cut a bone color, rough, rough, or I'm not going Say say I'm going private. Ewa. Now private in India. Now my home. The end to me. Now I mean to me. Me person. I'm going to call. 
private. But and I'm saying, when no, say na eh eh eh, and na car bubu and kola no money ade. We be oha car bubu na na no ano no be oha onswa. Or to me sorry, inti enu na mama, inti ama mi pressure. They be a pressure on me so. Come on, tell me, I'm until I'm be fear. I'm saying I come on to because. Every day in there, every week, we are a bit a school for better two and not three. Apart from the safety concerns parents have, for the pupils, it is the distance. Please, if you are coming to school, we walk. We walk when coming to school. When we, when we start at the junction, the police don't come early to come and stop the cars for us to close the road. So we wait until the light is on. So if the light doesn't on, we'll stay there. And sometimes if the light is on, the drivers come with a full speed, so we cannot cross the road. How long does it take you to walk to school? Please, one hour. Now, though the road traffic regulation is included in Legislative Instrument 2001-80, that is the ally of 22 of excludes all motorcycles and tricycles from being registered as commercial vehicles, tricycles are now becoming a preferred choice of transport in the Volta region. Its patrons say they are offering cheaper fares and are more comfortable. My colleague, Benjamin Aklama, has more. These Kekevis are making waves a lot in the Volta Regional Capital, especially, and also uh, within the region. So today we find out how the experience is with other people and what law regulates them, and also whether they are permitted to use these vehicles on commercial purpose. The police in the region say they are finding it difficult to regulate the commercial use of the Mahama Kambus due to the absence of structured regulations. Regional MTTD Commander Chief Superintendent Odru Abrakwa told City News that the tricycles surfaced in the whole municipality a few months ago and his outfit is engaging relevant state institutions on how to regulate them. We went to Road Safety Commission, we discussed this into detail and then we followed up to DVLE. When we followed up to DVLE, we were informed that, yes, the tricycles have been registered, but they have been registered for private purposes. They have not been registered for commercial purposes. Commercial. The issue has been a little bit dicey. You know, um, when this issue cropped up, we started calling the regions, and indeed, all over Ghana, you can bear with me, these operations are going on. And um, if Volta region alone decides that, okay, we are clamping down the operation, where do we come from? 